Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will discuss how to choose the best indicator period. Hello everyone, my name is Radna Vojtko, I'm CEO of Quantpedia. Today in this video we will discuss the topic and problem that's known to every systematic trader. And the question is how to choose the best period uh, for indicators uh, when we have a systematic trading strategy that's based on some indicators. So academic literature recognizes a large set of indicators and factors that are connected with various assets and various strategies. For example, we can have a trading strategy, uh, the trend following strategy that's using the moving average. It can be simple, exponential, and we are creating a rule that we buy if the price of the asset is above, above the average. Now, but the question is, what is the ideal ideal period for the evaluation of the moving average? We can use some fixed period, or we can try to optimize and find what's the best number for our case. So academic papers that show strategies usually suggest some fixed period or present a set of possible periods. So for example, we have 12 months momentum in stocks, one month short term reversal, uh, we use stochastic oscillator with k equal to 14, or we use RSI 30, RSI 15, RSI 14, etc. But the key question is, is this the best number? Is this the best period? And would it be reliable also in the future for this type of the strategy and for this indicator? In this um, article, we aim to show some possible approaches how to find optimal evaluation period for indicators. In this paper or in this, uh, in this article, we are focused on a cross-sectional momentum asset allocation strategy that build on five ETFs. And it's based on neighbor's favor relative trend strategies for investing or based on this paper. We have this strategy in our uh, database. It's called Momentum Asset Allocation Strategy. The strategy is fairly simple. We are having investment universe that consists of five ETS, SPI for US stocks, uh, AFA for foreign stocks, uh, bonds. We have some rates and some commodities. And we pick three ETS with the strongest 12 month momentum in, uh, into our portfolio, weigh them equally hold them for one month and rebalance. The strategy is performing pretty well. Now the question is, is this 12 month period the best period or how we should treat this strategy? How we should build this strategy? How we should find if this uh, 12 month period is the best one? We have like two approaches how to pick an indicator period. The first one is when we try to aim for the robustness. So instead of picking just one indicator, we perform a backtest and we pick a set of indicators or set of periods instead of just one. So not all of the momentum periods perform as good as in the original backtest, uh, but our aim is not to find the best one. Our aim is to find multiple periods for the indicator and be diversified between them. In this case, we will not have a problem if in the future, the 12 month period or is in our case, will not perform as well as eight month period or six month period. Our strategy will remain reasonably profitable. It will be more diversified. So it's a trade-off. We reduce the performance, but reduce the risk uh, of the other performance. We would call this approach the average approach. So that's the first way how we can answer the question how to choose the best period for indicators. So we will not choose the just one, but we will choose multiple periods. The second way how to answer this question answer this problem is that we can optimize the period by evaluating the performance of the every momentum strategy so we will build multiple strategies from i don't know three month momentum up to 15 month momentum we will grade strategies or evaluate the strategies during some predefined fixed period and we select the best performing rule for the next short period for the next month for example and this process repeated each month to find the optimal strategy uh, the second approach is called sometimes walk forward approach. There is a lot of papers and there is a, a long thread on uh, Wikipedia or one article on Wikipedia, so you can see it. The walk forward procedure procedure works as uh, as I mentioned. So it means we will select the in sample optimization period and then we trade during the out of sample period. And again, we select the in sample optimization period and we trade during the out of sample, etc. etc. And we repeat that exercise every month. So let's take a look on our on our case. How does it look like with our strategy? As I mentioned, the investment universe consists of five values and diversified ETFs. It's a uh, really bad ETF, uh, Deutsche Bank commodity ETF, uh, seven to ten years treasury bonds, SP 500, and iShares uh, MSCI AF ETFs, which are foreign stocks. Firstly, we construct a momentum factor from uh, three to five months, and then we rank EGTF according to their momentum, and we invest into three best ETFs. 
So each month we picked three winners, and as a result, we have three different momentum strategies uh, that are the candidates for the final strategy. Now, the question is which period we will choose three months, 15 months, 12 months. So, in average approach, we can show you why, why it makes sense to use every approach. So, we can split the whole sample into two halves. So, we can split the sample from 1987 until 2003. We can take a look how does the momentum strategies work in, during the period 2003 to 2018. We can check the performance during the first half. So, we see that during the first half, strategy was the best with the tandem momentum. So, when we sort ETFs based on tandem momentum, we had the highest performance. All of the momentum periods outperformed the benchmark, which is the portfolio that holds 20% uh, in each ETF. So every uh, momentum strategy outperformed, but the 10 and 11 month momentum were the best. So that was during the first half, 1987 to 2003. So in case we are in the year 2003, we would be happy to pick 10 month momentum as the winner and trade only this strategy with the 10 month period because it looks the best. It has the highest performance. All of the other strategies uh, have the smaller performance, but all of the strategies are outperforming the, the benchmark, so the average uh, performance of all of the five ETFs. Now, but how the performance will look like in the second half, so in uh, years 2003 until 2019. Here we see that it looks a little different. So uh, in the second half, the 10th month momentum is not the best one. It barely outperforms the average performance of every ETF. By picking the best period over the first half, it doesn't mean that this strategy with the 10 months momentum would be the best also in the second half. So in our case, when we build our strategy and when we choose the indicator period just on the past and we choose just the best period from the past, uh, it doesn't guarantee us that it will be the best period also for the future. That's the reason why we use the average approach. So there is a possible solution. We do not pick, we do not pick just one strategy. There is no need to be fixed on one period. Rather than finding the optimal period, we diversify the period. So it means that we will try uh, to pick multiple periods and to be diversified. So it will not happen to us that we pick the period that will not perform well in the future, so that we will underperform the average. So in this case, we can select, for example, 8, 8, 10 and 14 months momentum strategies, and you can build a final composite strategy. We want to cover the best performing area. In our case, uh, the best performing areas is from 8 months until the 14 months. Uh, in the first half of the sample. So we want to cover the best performing area, but we want to be the diversified. What's the result? So the result, the benchmark performance uh, is 8% with a maximum drawdown of 43%. So that's the benchmark performance when we hold uh, all the five ETS uh, as a, in equal weight. Our momentum strategy, our composite average momentum strategy that holds 43% in each sub strategy, first 43% in the eight month momentum, second 43% in 10-month momentum and last 43% in 13-month momentum strategy has nearly 2% higher return with small drawdown, better return to drawdown ratio. And now uh, how it will look like when we use the walk forward approach. So uh, once again we have 1997 uh, until 2019 uh, evaluation period. We already constructed the momentum strategies. So we constructed momentum strategies from three until 15 months, and we are using the three years performance evaluation period. So in the first three years, we select the best performing momentum strategy and we use it for the next month. After that month, we again look which momentum strategy from three until 15 months is the best in the three years, and we select the best one and we use the period in the next month, etc. etc. So exactly as it's showed in this picture. So if in case we build best strategy, still outperform the benchmark performance uh, with a smaller drawdown and a better, uh, better performance. Here in our case, when we compare the walk forward approach and the average approach, uh, the average approach is a little higher performance than the walk forward approach, but that's not always the case. It depends on the strategy, depends on the better period, etc. Et uh, it's hard to say which approach is better. Uh, the average approach or the walk forward approach. In the average approach, the resultant portfolio that's built from multiple uh, sub-strategies is probably more robust, 
in the block forward approach, it also has the positive uh, sides. So now the question is which approach is the better, the block forward approach or average approach. So in our case, the block forward approach doesn't have a such high performance than the average approach, but the resultant performance or the result differences are really small. So they really depends uh, on the strategy, it really depends on the backtest period, on the rules of the actual strategy, walk for our approach, rules, etc. In reality, the choose an approach, it really depends on the preferences of the individual systema uh, systematic trader. Uh, each approach has a positive and negative sides. From the experience, the walk forward approach usually has a higher performance. It's not in our case. And the average approach is usually more robust or more diversified. So it really depends what are the preferences of the individual trader. So uh, I would like to thank you for watching this video and we will see in the next one. Interested? Then pick another video to learn more or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.